Hi, this is Justin Coletti. You may know me from Sonic Scoop, but today I am with Plugin Alliance, talking to a guy I'm very excited to be talking to, Mr. Eric Bry. In case you don't know Eric, he's been working out of Mercy Sound Studios in New York City, right there in the East Village in the heart of New York City. And he's been in this field professionally, I don't know, at least a decade and a half, something like that. He's worked across genres from hip-hop, pop, EDM, electronic, to jazz and rock all over the place. And recently he cracked open a session from a client of his, Andre Sira, which we're going to be able to hear, he's actually going to play us a session and show us how we use a new tool. Because our excuse for talking today is Plugin Alliance. Our friends there just came out with a new plugin called the Lindell 50 series. And this is kind of modeled after API consoles. And Eric is a great guy to talk to about this because he has extensive experience on API consoles. So I'm really excited to get into it. Eric, how you been doing? Hey, Justin, how are you? How you been? Not too bad. Thanks so much for for joining us. Um, So right before we get into this Lindell Audio 50 series plugin that's kind of modeled after some of these really classic API stuff, can you tell me a little bit about your experience with API consoles and the like and what you dig about that whole uh, kind of paradigm? Yeah, so uh, often I I work with API consoles and I like how they have the punchiness, really nice top end and tight low end. And it gives, it gives it that bite. That's one thing I like about the API sound. It gives it that bite, that crunch. So when uh, Andre sent me the session, it was actually the f- first time uh, Plugin Alliance contacted me regarding the Lindell 50 series. And I'll be like, wow, this is perfect for this session because it's, uh, it's a little bit aggressive. It's fast. So I need, I need something that has a little bit of that bite. And the, the Lindell 50 series is, is just perfect for it. Cool stuff, man. Uh, we'll talk about a whole bunch of stuff, including you know your approach to working. But just to get an idea for people who haven't seen it yet, what is in that Lindell 50 series plugins? There's a few modules in there, right? It's kind of like a, a channel strippy kind of thing. Can you give us a sense for what's in there and what you like most about it? Yeah, so uh, the channel strip itself is uh, split up into five sections. They have the, you have the preamp, the EQ section, the compressor, and we have the gate and expander and the master fader. One thing unique about this plugin is that you could actually swap the modules on the EQ and as well as the compressor. The Lindell 50 series comes with three different EQs, which is the 50A, the 50B, and the um, 10 bed EQ, which is the 60. Uh, so this is cool. So you can go basically between, those are probably the three most popular uh, EQ modules that APIs ever put out. And then what's the difference between the, the A and the B? So we've got the graphic EQ on one side and then the A and the B on the other side. What's the difference there? So the, the A is a three band EQ and um, the uh, B is a four band EQ. Uh, they're very similar when it comes to sound. Uh, so you have more options, obviously, with the extra band on the uh, on the B. And then if you want to get really radical, those graphic EQs are amazing for really reshaping stuff. I know there's a lot of people in like hip hop and electronic who love them for totally reshaping. Stuff. If you want more precise um, uh, EQing, the uh, the ten band EQ would be perfect for that. Yeah, good stuff. And then so after that, we're hitting a compressor section. And is it the same kind of thing where you can go through like different uh, API kind of models in that one? We have the uh, VCA and the FAT. Uh, the VCA is um, based on the uh, the well-renowned 2500 compressor. That's the big stereo bus mama jama, the one that people really love. Yes, but it's it's built in mono, so which is which is really cool. And you know that's one of the compressors that everybody goes to when it comes to, especially when it comes to drums. I usually have that on my bus, a uh, drum bus, every time I mix. And then the FAT, which is based on the um, 525 module that they have, compressor right. API. Yeah, that's one of the lunchbox kind of uh, modules, right? And then you've got the expander gate. Please don't tell me I get like five different choices for expander gate. Can that? Can there at least be one where I don't get to swap everything out? That one you can't. Uh, it's. Um, I was talking to uh, Tobias and. This is actually their own design. Uh, he did mention that the expander gate is, all, is is their own design. That makes sense. You're a little bit more limited in the analog world in something like an expander gate and getting it as precise as you can in the digital world. That's one of the few things where people don't nerd out and want to try a thousand different colors. So in using this in your session with Andre, where did you find uh, this thing excelling the most? Where did you find yourself using the compressor the most? What kind of elements did you find yourself using the EQ on the most? That kind of thing. I actually have this uh, plugin run all, all throughout the tracks. And I love how this sounds in, in the drums because it gives it that punch, like I said, that bite. I'm trying to capture that 
almost that old school vibe, which is the drums really smack and it's really hard. Basically in this session, I just use this channel strip without, without going outside of it. So pretty much a whole track mixed with just the 50 series. Yes, sir. Good stuff, yeah. What do you like about that approach, about the idea of working with a channel strip instead of like a bunch of different, you know, pick and choose your own plugins for each type of a processor? Uh, the thing is that like sometimes it could get overwhelming, especially with all the choices of plugins out there. But once you just work, I mean, if you have a channel strip that has everything in it, um, aside from effects and reverbs and all that stuff, once you have a channel strip that actually just shapes the sound right there inside it, why, why, why go outside? Just do everything in there, you know? Um, it gives, especially when it, also, it really gives you that sound. Good stuff. So give me a sense for uh, this particular track by Andre. What did you do on this track? Like compared to from where it started to where it ended up, what do you think were some of the most important things to address in this mix and how did you go about it? I mean, the session was pretty uh, decently recorded, uh, which is, uh, a mixing engineer's dream having those sessions oh, that are, <laughs> um the session is really low and heavy so i do a lot of cutting in this mix especially when it comes to the uh instrumental parts of it the vocals was was pretty clean and what one thing i like about the this channel strip especially apa in particular um it gives you that clean sound but not sterile you know what i mean so it, it it's true it's it's basically true to its uh, source. It doesn't color anything or whatnot. Good stuff. When you get something big and fat and need a little tightening up, it's the right kind of color for it. I I'm curious if you could tell me in just, you know, a few words or a few sentences, what do you think the role of a mixer is? What do you feel like your job is when you're mixing a track? How do you see that role? Uh, basically, uh, a mixing engineer's jo job is to bring the artist's vision to life uh, and how they convey their message through the song and you know as a mixing engineer that you should be enhancing those elements that you want to you want to show or you know uh, portray in the song of of course there's a, the technical aspect of it but um altogether it's bringing that feel that vibe that the artist wants to uh show yeah no that's important because so many of us get trapped into the technical minutia the in the weeds but it's not just about making kick drum sound banging it's about making song sound banging and you know bringing out uh, evoking the emotion that they're trying to get across and i think a lot of the best mixers i know see, see it that way first and foremost so i think you're in great company i mean people just get sucked into the technical aspect of it without sitting back and and uh hearing the song as a whole and that's, that's yeah. when a lot of mixing in here gets lost. Totally. Before you dive into elements, know where is this supposed to end up? What kind of vibe were they trying to achieve? Where do they want this thing to go? And then that informs, I guess, all the little technical decisions you make along the way. Indeed. All right, good stuff. Now, I know you've got a lot of stuff to do today. You're going to be recording a demo video for us where we can hear and see some of your ideas around mixing with this particular tool in action. Before I let you go, because we are on the Plugin Alliance channel, I got to ask, I'm an owner of the... This, the mega bundle subscription. I think it's one of the biggest steals in pro audio. I got to ask you, what are a couple of your favorite plugin lines, plugins that you find yourself using again and again? Ooh, uh, aside from this uh, new Lindell 50 series, I use the uh, SSL 9000J a lot. Uh, the Brainworks V3 for um, surgical EQs. Oh man, there's there's a few. Oh the the dear VR monitor, which I used recently because of, of uh, I I basically mix uh, in different coffee shops in New York City. So like that would be that's like the perfect tool for me at the moment. Uh, so th those are the three things I could, that come to mind. But I mean, there's a. Pff, Tons of that I could name. But yeah, we, I mean, there's too many to count. If we started listing plug and lines, plugins would be here all day. All yeah. right. <laughs> Thanks so much. Well, I want to let you get to it. I know you're going to be recording some uh, demo videos for uh, us on this where you can see and hear where a track starts off and how you end up using a channel strip plugin like this one. So, Eric, thanks so much for taking the time to talk today. Thanks for having me. All right. Guys, you can check out Eric Bry. Actually, Eric, what are the best places to check you out if people want to find out more from you? I'm on Instagram, so it's at Eric Bry, E-R-Y-C-K-B-R-Y, and I have a website, 
ericbry.com. Good stuff. All right. And if you want to check out anything that Plugin Alliance makes for free, you can get a two-week free trial of anything they make over at plugin-alliance.com. That's plugin-alliance.com. Definitely think about that mega bundle. I have a subscription to it. I think it's uh, some of the best money I spend every month. So uh, big thanks to those guys for uh, hooking us up with such a great set of tools. Looking forward to trying this Lindell Audio 50 series out more for myself. Thanks for hanging out with us. This has been Justin Cluddy of Sonic Scoop. Today here with Plugin Alliance and Mr. Eric Bry. See you next time.